Well, hello, Central. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Nikki, and this is Nick. And wherever you're watching from, we want you to let us know right in the comments below. Also, make sure you share this experience with your friends and with your family. Um, thank you so much again for coming. And Nick, let's talk about all the opportunities. That yeah, got that's going right. On. We have a lot going on because right now we've heard from people like, hey, I'm ready to get going again. I'm ready to get back out there. I want some community in my life. Community yes. being a big felt need that uh, people are having in this church. And we wanted to let them know all the community opportunities that we have going on right here at Central. First being, if you are a couple uh, married, engaged, and you wanna be a part of a community with other couples, we have this thing coming up this Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. called Crazy Little Thing Called Love. It's a community group for couples. I love that. All you have to do to register for that and everything we're gonna talk about today is just go to central.family and you can register. But then there's another community opportunity coming up, Refresh. Yes. Ladies, Refresh is coming up April 17th. You do not want to miss it. All you have to do is register at central.family. Now, this time you can come and join us online or you can join us in the building. But just make sure that you register at central.family. Well, Nikki, let's go ahead and kick you out of here because you're going to lead us in some wonderful worship. I'll Indeed. finish up with them. There's also other community opportunities for you men. We have a thing called Man Cave that happens every month. You don't want to miss it if you just want to grow with other men in your faith. Uh, make sure to take advantage of that. For you women, we have Ladies Night Out. For you high schoolers and middle schoolers, or if you're a parent of a high schooler, middle schooler, we have uh, CY Nights coming up in April. It's gonna be awesome. We've got me time for you moms. The main thing is we have community going on right here at Central. Lots of opportunities. All you have to do is go to central.family. There's lots of quick links and how you can get involved. But right now, let's go ahead and get ready to worship with our Central family. Hey, you made it. Let's all stand and sing with that one. As the day that breaks, you're lighting up my way. My soul awakes to give you all the praise. Oh, 
some praise in this room today. Let's get those hands going. Sing this with me. you from God's love. Nothing can separate you from God's love. Listen, not death or life, not the fear of today or worries about tomorrow. Nothing can separate you. believe Easter is right around the corner. I'm so excited and you should be too. Now make sure you head over to Easter at Central.com. We've got graphics, we've got all kinds of things that you can share 
with your friends and family. You can pick the experience time that you want to come to. And also an easy way to invite is just text the word invite to 55000. Super That's easy. Simple. Our team made it incredibly simple. That easy. Invite to 55000. And they're going to send you graphics that you can text and send to your friends, throw on your social media. So make sure to check that out. And then Nikki, something else that we want to highlight this weekend is we've been hearing of watch parties popping up all around the nation, all around the world. I don't think people really know what a watch party is, yeah. which it's when you have a few friends over or family over to experience church with you. Our very own Central Kingman started from a watch party in Kingman, Arizona. Now mm -hmm. over 500 people attend that location. They are a location now, so make sure you start up your watch parties wherever you are. And let us know in the comments if you have one right now. Share it in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. That's right. And Nikki, I thought you could give some shout outs to some of these online people watching right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. We want to shout out Jen from Wisconsin, Yvonne from California, and shout out to Lee's Watch Party in Tennessee. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks for worshiping with us. We're so glad you're here with us. Here at Central this last year during this pandemic, we really upped our care in the different communities that we're a part of through Hope for the City. Check this video out. Central family, we are so thankful this weekend. This marks 52 weeks that we have been out serving food, Woo. five plus days a week in pop-up food pantries. Incredible. It's been remarkable. And behind uh, Mike and I are the team captains for Hope for the City, our food relief effort. They represent 2,700 volunteers who've been serving consistently. Unbelievable. 52 weeks, come rain or shine. Many times they are there the night before pre prepping everything or out in the middle of the night preparing for all of what God's gonna do that day. One point or 11.5 million pounds of food and they've helped over 925,000 people over the last 52 weeks. Just incredible. 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 So, um, you know, it was only supposed to be a two-week thing. Remember? Yeah. Oh, two-week two shutdown? Weeks. Yep. Two-week, whatever it was. <laughs> Something about the curve. <laughs> Went off the cliff, right? And here we are a year later. Um, I would have never foreseen how God would see us through, but I'll tell you how he saw us through was through you, yeah. your faithfulness, your generosity, the team behind us, their faithfulness, their generosity, and the people that you can't see behind them. And it was a huge team community effort. Uh, listen, this week when you are tempted to get cynical, I want you to remember these faces behind me. This week when you're tempted to think that there's nobody good left, <laughs> I want you to remember these faces. When you're tempted to think that the world's just rigged and the system's rigged and, and you know there's nobody that's genuinely out there for other people serving, remember these faces because they're not only here, but they're all around you. Really great people that truly make our world go around through their kindness and love. So let's give them a big standing ovation and a huge thank you for 52 Woo! weeks. Love it. So good. Uh, you can grab a seat. You know, we want to also give you a huge standing O this weekend. It's through the generosity of the Central family that makes this possible. 
You know, every Easter we think about what we can do to make an impact in our city. And of course, we know what this year's impact needs to be. It needs to be to continue these food relief efforts. How many of you like to see us continue these efforts, huh? I mean, a year. But yet the needs are still great. We have the second highest unemployment rate anywhere in the country. And every week we're still serving thousands and thousands of people who are in desperate need of hope, who are in desperate need of food. These are our friends and neighbors. And we're not gonna give up on them. We're not gonna quit, we're not gonna stop. We're gonna be there for them. And it's through the generosity of the Central Family that makes that possible. That's why we wanna let you know about a special emphasis that we'll, we'll be having called Feed the City. Feed the City is just your opportunity, my opportunity to step up and to feed a family. For $35, church, we can feed a family for an entire week. Now, how do we do that? It's through our relationships with business partners and other nonprofits. And sometimes we get this food either severely discounted or sometimes it's even donated from other organizations and other businesses in town. But listen, because of their generosity and because of our relationships, your dollar goes a long, long way of impacting someone in our community. And so we want you to pray right now. How many families would God allow you to sponsor at $35? I think all of us can do one. In fact, I was telling my granddaughter the other day about this emphasis called Feed the City. She goes, Pops, I want to I want to donate to a family. Can I do that? I said, absolutely, you can do that. She goes, I have enough in my allowance money to do that. Listen, we can all do something. For some of us, it might be one. Others, it might be five, 10, or even more. But if we all step up, I believe, and here's what we're praying, church, that you and I will be able to sponsor 20,000 families this Easter with the hope of your generosity. Come on, church. That'll be enough to carry us for 90 days to impact over the next three months. So many lives here in Las Vegas. But on behalf of these families, men and women, boys and girls, veterans and single moms, young people, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for making a difference and thank you for caring for others, church. Your, your generosity is amazing. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Will you join me? Well, Father, we love you so much. We're humbled, in fact, to be called your children. You're such an amazing father. You're so good to us. Your love endures forever. Your mercies are new every morning. God, we come to you with expectant hearts, knowing that you're always available, that you love us, and that you want to be behind everything that we do. God, your hand of favor is upon us, and we recognize that. And God, we pray right now that you would just lead us to the generosity that you'd have us to share to the benefit of others. And Father, as you work and move in our lives, I promise you this, that we'll give you all the credit for everything that you do. For we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. How are we doing today, Central Family? Hey, Central Live, our worship team, over the last decade has been able to write many original songs right here out of the heart of Central Church. And over the last couple of years, we've had the privilege to write with some really incredible songwriters from the Christian music industry. And uh, it's my privilege to introduce one of those to you today. To my left over here is Mitch Wong and his wife, Steph. They're joining us. Originally from Australia, but they're living in Nashville, and Mitch has written many songs with us, like God is Love, or I Know Who Holds Tomorrow, as well as Nothing Can Stop My Praise, which we sang earlier today. But Mitch is gonna lead us in God is Love today. So would you help me give a huge, warm, central welcome to my good friend, Mitch Wong. Thank you so much for having us. We're so honored to be here. And you know, the beautiful thing is, whether you're from Australia, or Nashville, or Central in Las Vegas, we all worship the same God. Amen? So come on, as we sing this song, can you just lift your hands, open your heart. Let's just worship Him today. So love the world that He gave His one and only Son and to
Good word right there. Well, this weekend, last year at this time, was the weekend where maybe you remember it was a Sunday night and everybody was in the grocery store and taking everything off the shelves. Then on March 16th, our, our economy shut down and we weren't able to meet and gather in this room for several months. And, you know, I, I remember back to that time, it was uh, my daughter Lola in, in January of 2020. She came to me and she said, Hey, Dad, some of the kids and I were talking at school. We've heard some stuff on the news about coronavirus. Do you think that's going to make its way over here? Will that affect our lives? And I looked at her and I said, Sis, no way. No way. Don't read the news headlines. They always make a way to get through this. And, and then in February, I was looking at my phone and, and a news notification pops up and it's empty shelves in Europe. And I remember I was with my mom and dad at the time and I looked at my mom and I said, Mom, do you think we should just go to the store and get some basic supplies just so we're prepared in case this does make its way over here? My mom looks at me, she goes, Drew, no way, no way. We don't need to be concerned. We don't need to be worried. Well, 30 minutes goes by, my mom comes to me. She says, I, I guess it wouldn't hurt if we just go to the store and get some basic supplies. And so my mom and I went and, and we, we get to the store and we notice some things are starting to disappear off the shelves. And so as I left the store, I called my friends and I told them, Hey, I think you should just go get some basic supplies, be prepared just in case something happens. My friends would tell you to this day, they thought I was absolutely crazy. Then it was just a month later where everything shut down and we weren't able to gather and it was, it was really a difficult time for us as a church where it was everything online. But I'll tell you what, I don't wanna negate anything that has happened over the last year. I know it's been a difficult year for a lot of people, but I am grateful that we're here today, that we are gathered, that we are worshiping, that we're celebrating the goodness and the greatness of God. There's a story in the book of Acts, the New Testament of the Bible, and it's a story about a man named Paul and Silas. And they're out sharing the good news of Jesus and someone reports them to authorities and they get arrested and they're thrown in prison. And if you read the story, it will tell you that it was about midnight. They're locked up in their jail cell and they're praying and worshiping. The message translation says that they were singing a robust hymn to God. And about that time, God shook the earth and their chains came undone and the doors flung wide open and, and they were set free. And it was because of their song it caused the entire jailer and his family too to make Jesus the leader and forgiver of their lives and be baptized. 
church, I can tell you, when we worship, when we sing about the goodness and greatness of God, I believe that lives are gonna be changed in this room today, that God is gonna do something amazing only He can do. And I wanna take a moment right now, and I, I wanna pray for our church family. Whatever you're faced with, we just wanna pray for you. We do this every weekend. If you need prayer for whatever you're going through in your life, would you just boldly slip your hand up in the air if we can pray with you or for you? And church family, if you're seated next to someone with their hand raised, I want to encourage you to just stretch a hand out towards them. You don't have to touch them. Let's just pray and ask God to do what only he can do. God, we thank you so much for our church family. Thank you for the individuals who are bold enough to raise their hands. God, maybe even for some of us in the room today, we didn't even have the courage to put our hand up, Lord, but you know what's going on in our hearts. Lord, you know the darkness we're faced with, the insecurities, the pain, the depression, the addictions. I pray, Lord, that you would just meet us right here in this room. Lord, that you would set us free from whatever's holding us back. God, we trade it for your hope, for your joy, and for your peace. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here today, to gather, to celebrate the goodness of your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for sending him as a sacrifice so that we could be set free. We love you, God, and we praise you for it. It's in your name we pray. And every person in this room said together.
this uh, worship service. Now I've got some shout outs for you. So I want to give a shout out to Josh from Kingman. I also want to give a shout out to Brandon from Jacksonville, Adrienne from Nashville. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Now I want to welcome you and I want to welcome the God Without Borders a group that is watching as well. You guys are awesome. Wait a, wait a minute. interrupted this. Pastor Judd knows this is coming because we did it last night. But on Tuesday is Pastor Judd's 50th birthday. So we're going to have to sing together. I want to invite you to stand. We're going to sing some Stevie Wonder. Happy birthday. Here we go. Right here too, Ari Ariana, 20, 22, 22, 22, 22. All right, thank you guys, thank you so much. They, were, they totally surprised me with that last night. I was sort of dumbfounded. You know, when you turn 50, you really don't want to announce that. Come on, y'all. You're like, no, man, I'm, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just happy to be alive. That's From here on out, it's one foot in the grave and one foot in life and every day's a gift. You know what I'm saying? So. Anyway, thank you guys. Um, all right, well, hey, let's talk about how we fight our battles and, uh, you know, let's dive in because uh, I think we're gonna talk about some things that can be really transformative for us today in our lives. By the way, when I turned 40, I remember I was so excited about that because I thought I would be wise. Like, people would see me differently. Like, I'm a real leader now, I'm 40. And it's so funny, when you turn 50, you're like, shh. Anyway, I wouldn't trade where I'm at today and what I know today for all the years. God in his goodness and in his mercy has seen me through and I believe he will see you through as well. Um, but when my daughter was about 10 years old, Emma, uh, her and Lori were talking one day and my wife Lori was trying to convince her that she had the cool parents Parents, you know we do this, right? You brainwash your kids early, right? You're like, look, your parents are cool because they don't know any better. And so she was telling her, hey, you, you know, you, 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 we're, we're the cool parents. And so Emma at one point goes, well, well you know, maybe we, um, we should talk about our superpowers as a family. Everybody has a superpower. We should talk about ours. And so um, Lori says to Emma, well, what do you think your superpower is? And Emma says, well, I have the superpower of cuteness. She says, I'll just, I'll just stun the bad people with my cuteness. And uh, she says, my, my brother Ethan, he has the superpower of imagination. And whatever he imagines, you know, can come true. And she says, Dad, he's got like the superpower of the Bible. And he talks about the good words of the Bible. And that can defeat the bad guys. And so Lori's sitting there and she says, well, what do you think my superpower is? And, and Emma says, well, Mom, you have the superpower of bad cooking. You can poison the bad guys with your cooking. <laughs> Parenting is not for the faint of heart, y'all. <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart. But I want to talk to you today about a superpower that all of you have access to and a superpower that can help you when you're fighting your battles. We all face battles. We've been saying over the last few weeks that if you're in the middle of a battle, it doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It doesn't mean you're outside of God's will. It doesn't mean he's like turned his back on you because God rarely takes his people out of their battles. What he does do is empower us to fight our battles in his strength and in his power. And we've been looking at tools and weapons that can help us fight our battles. And today I wanna to talk to you about the superpower of gratitude. Gratitude is a tool, a superpower. If you will lean into it, it can help you. Giving thanks in the battle gives you strength for the battle. 
Giving thanks in the battle gives you strength for the battle. For those of you that were here last week, we talked about Jehoshaphat and this amazing war story in the Bible where the Israelites send the worship team out ahead of the army into battle. And so the worship team goes first. And the worship team was singing an amazing song. The song went like this, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Think about it. They're going into battle. What are they doing? They're giving thanks. They're just singing it again and again. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Some of you are in a battle right now for your mental health. Some of you are in a battle for your finances. Some of you are in a battle for you know the the um, uh, the will of of a kid against a parent, and you're in that struggle right now in your life. Some of you are in a battle with addiction and things that you face, and it's very real and talent tangible. But one of the things that will give you strength, one of the things that can help lead to your victory is giving thanks in the middle of the battle, stopping every day to give thanks to God, recognizing who he is, and then giving thanks to others. So let's check out kind of where we've gone and where we're going in this series, how we fight our battles. Just some icons here for us. Uh, week one, we talked about prayer. If you missed this, you can watch any of this at centralonline.tv. But Prayer is incredibly important for how we fight our battles as people of faith. We talked about God's word and how key it is that we stand on God's word in our lives. Uh, we looked at the power of worship and uh, talked about that last week. This week we're talking about gratitude. Next week we're gonna talk about generosity and generosity of spirit. And then we're gonna talk the week before Easter about the power of God's love for us in the cross and about the power of remembrance, remembering all that God has done. Uh, it's gonna be um, a great rest of the teaching series, but gratitude is key. And to kind of get our hearts dialed into gratitude, I wanna go to one of my favorite Psalms in the Bible, Psalm 103. In fact, if you want a great sort of spiritual practice for this week, just write down Psalm 103, pop that open on your phone or in your Bible and, uh, and read that this week and just let it kind of uh, soak into your life. This is my favorite Psalm and there's 150 Psalms, so that's saying something, y'all. Psalm 103 is all about gratitude and praise. There's not a single request in it. The Psalmist David uh, doesn't ask God for a single thing. This psalm is all about giving thanks to God for who he is. Check out how he starts it out. Psalm 103, beginning in verse one. When we get to the red word, I'm just gonna ask you to say this real loud. Make sure you kind of wake up the person next to you if they're dozing right now. Here we go, it says, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never what? Forget. Somebody just went, what, huh? May I never forget the good things that he does for me. Now, this is huge, check this out. The first thing David does in this Psalm is he talks to himself. <laughs> you see that, he, call, he says, hey, to himself, let all that I am praise the Lord. And then again to himself, again, you know, let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget. Sometimes in the battle, one of the most powerful things that you can do is give yourself a good talking to. Sometimes, and I don't mean you've lost your mind, but I do mean it's important sometimes to look in the mirror and verbally or in your own mind, give a pep talk to yourself. Remind yourself who you are and whose you are. Remind yourself that God created you with a purpose, on purpose, and for a purpose. Remind yourself that yeah, you're in a battle, but God still got your back. Sometimes you gotta look in the mirror. Look, we do this at the gym. You know, you go to the gym, you get the weights. You know, that's why they got mirrors everywhere. We look in the mirror and we're like, hey, what's up? And then you lift in that mirror, you know, sometimes in the mirror, you know, you're, you start making sounds, you start grunting. Ugh! You know, you're making a lot, you're trying to find some level of motivation, right? And sometimes I watch guys, you know, they, they kind of dance in front of that mirror. Come on, come on. They're talking to themselves in front of people. You got this. You can do this. You're a man. And then they grab those weights and they go, spiritually, when you're in a battle, sometimes you got to talk to yourself more than you listen to yourself. Listen. The voices that will play in your head when you're tired and you're weary and you've been in a battle are voices of defeat, 
right? They're voices of despair. They're voices that say, you're not good enough. You'll never overcome this addiction. You'll never have victory in your life. You'll always be. Listen, when I was going through my addiction years as a teenager, it was so entrenched in my mind that I would be dead by my 30s that that became something that would play. Even now, guys, I just turned 50 years old. You don't understand. I never thought I would get to 50. I never thought I would get to 40. And when I'm tired and when I'm worn out, all that same drama and stuff in my mind can start playing back. It'll look different for you, but we all have it. We gotta talk to ourselves more than we listen to ourselves. We gotta speak God's word over our lives more than we allow those voices to just play. Because when you're in the battle, you're fighting for life. When you're in the battle, it's no joke. When you're in the battle, you're not just playing around with religion. Right When you're in the battle, you're fighting for your, fi- your future, your family, your sanity, and everything else. And in the battle, gratitude is a superpower. So what do we need to do? A couple thoughts. One is to look up and give thanks to God. And then secondly, to look out and give thanks to others. First, to look up and give thanks to God. A couple weeks ago, I left church on the weekend on Sunday and uh, had a meeting after church. I didn't get home until... Um, late or almost home until later. And, and uh, so it was dark outside. My wife was out of town. She had stayed moving our daughter into her dorm with college and stuff and my son as well. So I was here alone and, and I went by the gas station right, before, right by my house to get gas. And when I got out of the car, I realized I didn't have my wallet. And I was like, oh man, I think, I, I, where could it be? You know, I start going down the list, right, of all the places where my wallet might be. I look in the car, I can't find it, but everything's in my wallet. Some of you have a purse this way, a wallet this way, all, you know, my debit card, financial access, um, you know, insurance cards, license, all the things are in my wallet. And um, so I can't find it anywhere, so I go home, I start searching the house. Have you ever noticed when you've lost something and you start looking for it, that you just, you know, if it goes on for a while, you go to the same place places again and again and again looking for like at one point it was my fourth time to go in my closet and I'm like dude talking to myself it's not in the closet but you know you just don't know what to do right you just pull the drawers open and then you know I sit down for a second I'm like well maybe, maybe it's back in that drawer I just didn't see it you know I pull all the drawers open again I looked all over the house this went on forever and um, you know I, I started to get hopeless my family's out of town my car's pretty low on gas and I'm actually wondering like is there any money stashed in one of my son's drawers that I could just sort of steal for a while and I'll pay him back but I, I didn't have any way to get money no way to get cash I didn't have a credit card and my whole family's out of town. I got nothing. So in the midst of all this, I think, well, all right, I guess the only thing I know to do is go back up to the church and look, you know, maybe, maybe it's at the church. So I get in the car, looking at the gas gauge. I'm like, "Eh, it's a little, (laughs) but I'm going to do it. Right. So I, I drive back to the church and when I'm driving back to the church, I get in the most grumbly, negative headspace. I remember I'm driving along and I'm like, man, my wallet's not gonna be at the church. It's, I've lost it, it's gone. And this, I, didn't, I don't need this right now in my life. I got so much going on, come on, God. I got other things I need to deal with. I gotta get a new license, I gotta get a new debit card, I gotta get a new credit card, I gotta call, cancel all the things. What's gonna happen to Netflix? Look. I got too many things going on. Anybody feel me here? Like things go wrong in our lives and we're just like, I don't got time for this, God. I'm your guy. I'm serving you. I know I'm trying to help people. And I'm driving along and it's just going from bad to worse. And then, then I start thinking about my car. So I gave my daughter my car, which was a 2017, and I took her car so she would have, you know, a more reliable car. So I drive my daughter's, my daughter's um, Honda CRV with like 134,000 miles on it. And I'm cruising down the road and I'm like, this car's a beater. <laughs> you know, it's not even worth the gas to put in this car. Why do I even have this car? How did I get in this situation? I'm 50. (laughs) And it's just one thing after another, right? You know, do you ever, 
when I get in a grumbly state of mind, there's everything is fair game, right? Like it just one thing leads to another. I pull up to the church finally. Everybody's gone. It's late at night. I remember getting out of my car and I'm like, why am I even here? This is this is dumb. My wallet is not here. Why am I going to walk around in the dark, try to find my wallet? There's nobody here. My wallet's not here. Why am I even alive? <laughs> One grumble after another, you know, and I, I come in and I'm looking around and I'm like, what am I going to do? Just walk up and down the aisle. Maybe it just randomly popped out of my pocket and nobody found it. So it dawns on me once I start looking around, like I was in one person's office for just a minute before services. I remember sitting down in the chair in their office and, and so I walk in there and I'm thinking, I don't know why, but why I'm here. And I look over and sure enough, in this seat in their office, there's my wallet just sitting there. I think I pulled my phone out of my back pocket and my wallet came with it. And I went nuts. I was like Gollum in the Lord of the Rings about, you know, the precious. You know, I was like, my, my precious. You know, I'm like, I'm caressing it. I'm like, oh, the debit card, the license, all the things. I'm having a praise moment up here alone. Thank you, God. You're good again. <laughs> You're amazing. And I'm driving away, and it dawns on me. I started doing a little math. I've actually been um, probably in somewhere around 2,000 different, like, wrapping up weekend experiences, Saturday night or Sunday night, 2,000 different times. I've left the church and never lost my wallet. It never dawned on me to give thanks for that. All I'm thinking about is the one time I did lose it and how I don't need this in my life, right? And I think there is a tendency, psychologists call it like a negative bias in our lives. The tendency is to focus on the negative and to allow the negative to sting more in our lives than the positive. Research actually shows, think about this, that we as people, we will tend to feel the sting of losing a $20 bill much longer and more profoundly than we'll feel the joy of finding a $20 bill. They call it the hedonic treadmill that, that we just sort of adjust to good things in our lives. Like, you know, you get a new car and it's awesome, and then it's just a car. You know, you get a, you get a pay raise and, uh, you know, it's amazing, and then it's, just a, a re then it's just your job, right? You know, like, we just adjust to good things in our lives pretty fastly, pr pretty quickly, and we tend to take on this negative bias focusing on our problems. And if you put it in an image, it, it could look like this. Um, we look past all of the right things in our lives, and we focus on the wrong. Simple things like a wallet, which in the big scheme of things doesn't even matter, really. But this is, I think, what we often tend to do in our lives. Gratitude pushes against that and forces us to acknowledge and see the right that is all around us. Psalm 103, beginning in verse three, check it out. Um, when we get to this, the, this red word here, let's say it together. The psalmist says of God, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with what? Good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of you would love to have your life filled with good things? <laughs> yes. How many of you wouldn't mind having your youth renewed like the eagles, right? Some of you are young, but you're old. Do what David does here. Talk to yourself, challenge yourself, give thanks to God, let all that is within you praise God, and then don't forget all the good that he's done. And he starts to re rehash it. Like some of you in a battle right now just need to remember the faithfulness of God to you before you got in this battle. Some of you just need to remember that God forgave you and restored you and walked with you and saw you through. He met you when you couldn't do anything for yourself and walked with you spiritually and personally. Don't forget what God's done in the light when you're in the season where it feels dark. And so David says, Never forget. And from one grumbler to another, I can tell you, it is gratitude that helps us break free from a grumbling attitude. Grumbling is natural. Gratitude is supernatural. 
Gratitude renews your strength. So here's what I want to challenge you to do. Take that natural impulse to grumble and flip it into gratitude. See, if you can grumble about your taxes, then you can be grateful that you had income last year. Hello. Oh, I'm up in somebody's world now. Look, if you, if you can grumble about how messy your kids are, then you can be grateful that they're still within daily hugging distance. If you can grumble about how nasty the weather is outside, oh, here we go, right, all the time. Is it spring yet? Then you can be grateful for the roof over your head and the thermostat on the wall. If you can grumble about the cost of gas going up, then you can be grateful that you have a car to put that gas in. If you can grumble about a body part that doesn't work, <laughs> it happens more as you get older, knee, back, leg, hip, you can be grateful for all the other body parts that do actually work. Listen, if you can grumble about the new diet and how restrictive it is, then you can be grateful about you know, the food that you eat that only tastes half bad. If you can grumble about you know, how we're gonna open things up, maybe you grumble about us opening up too slowly, well, you can be grateful that we're opening up at all. If you can grumble that we're opening things up too fast, then you can choose to be grateful about all the precautions that have been taken to protect people. You can grumble about the few things that go wrong, or you can look up and be grateful for the many things that go right. Every grumble is a chance to be grateful. It's a chance to be grateful. And here's what I found in my own life. The more you look for good, the more you're gonna see good, right? If you look around and, 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 and you look for um, brokenness, you'll, you'll probably see brokenness. If you look for unfairness, you'll find unfairness. If you look for uh, people who aren't honest, you're gonna find people who are honest. But if you look for people who are kind and compassionate, you'll find people who are kind and compassionate. If you look for people who are doing good, you'll find people who are doing good. We tend to see and find what we're looking for. So if you start looking for God and all of his goodness in your life and looking up to him, it can help you in the battle. Giving thanks in the battle gives you strength for the battle. So look up to him. And then a second thought is look out. Look out and give thanks to others. You know, um, I'm all, I remember when our kids were little, we'd take them to their in-laws and uh, they, would, they would come out and the in-laws would pull us aside and say, man, your kids were so respectful. They said, please. And they said, thank you. And we were just shock and awe. We'd be like, really? Come on, parents, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, we've been trying to pound that into their heads for years, and they never do that at home. They said, they said, thank you? Amazing. I fish for it now. Um, I'm, I'm a little passive aggressive around our family. I'll like do the dishes, and then if I look around and nobody says anything, I'll be like, hey, I just want to make sure everybody knows I, I did the dishes. You're welcome. And then, you know, everybody's like, oh, thanks, Dad. Thanks, thank you. But thank you is a powerful thing. And as you sort of value others with thank you, I think it makes a difference in how you perceive your own value as a person. Look at this, Psalm 103, beginning in verse six. David just talks about God and his character and his goodness for us in our lives. Um, he says uh, something that's really profound, and it's coming back. And if it doesn't, we're still thankful. Um, here's what he says. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. 
The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love, which again is a quote to Exodus 34, a passage we looked at in a series we did in January called Great Expectations, the most quoted passage in the Old Testament, um, uh, by the Old Testament. We see it alluded to again and again. It comes up in Psalm 103. Here's what David's saying. God has been good. God is compassionate. God is kind. God places a value on me. And because God places a value on me, I can place value on others. I can say thanks to others. One of the greatest callings in life is to help others see their value in God's eyes, right? And it can just be as simple as getting intentional about saying thank you to people. Uh, Author A.J. Jacobs wrote a book called Thanks a Thousand. And it came from a little experiment he did where he went to his local coffee shop and he was gonna thank all the people that were involved in making that cup of coffee that he enjoyed. He just maybe didn't realize how extensive that list would become. But he started with a barista. Her name was Chung. And he said, "Uh, you know, thank you so much for making this coffee and preparing it for me. And she was sort of touched by that. She said, man, thank you. She goes, you know, it's just nice to be thanked. She goes, I think some people see baristas as sort of like vending machines. And they just sort of come in and they're like, give me my drink. And then they're, then they're out. And she goes, I, I really appreciate you saying that. He goes, well, I, I kind of want to thank everybody involved in making this cup of coffee. And, and so then he thanks Ed. Ed. Ed was a guy that helped roast the beans and kind of works in the back. And Ed not only appreciated him saying thank you, but then gave him some tips on how the professionals taste coffee and do taste testing, right? So he learned some things in the process. And and he just went on and began to thank every single person who had been involved in making his cup of coffee. He eventually thanked the people who grew the coffee beans in South America. He thanked the guy that drove the truck to ship the coffee beans. He thanked the exterminator who sprayed the warehouse so that the coffee beans didn't get overrun by bugs. He thanked the person that designed the lid that went on the coffee cup. Over a thousand people were involved in that one cup of coffee. And so he wrote a book about it, Thanks a Thousand. But in the process, he talks about the transformative power of gratitude. The Bible has been challenging us to be grateful for thousands of years, but all the research backs it up. Research from the last 10 years, it'll pretty much help every area of your life. Your health, your emotional well-being, your sense of identity and security, uh, your sense of happiness and peace, so much of it is directly impacted by gratitude. But here's what Jacob said about gratitude that I thought was insightful. He says, when it comes to gratitude, it is easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than it is to think your way into a new way of acting. In other words, it's easier to just go do it and just start being grateful to other people. Imagine what could happen if you just started to thank people, even this week in your life, that just did things that you normally took for granted. Uh, Thank a family member or a friend for going to the grocery store. Uh, Thank somebody for creating a supportive environment at home. Thank the people around you for the little things that they do. Just tell them thank you and thank them for who they are. Simple things that you may overlook. It not only changes them, don't miss this, it changes you. And especially if you're in the middle of a battle, that kind of gratitude can go a long way. You know, as your pastor, I'm grateful for the people in our church. And I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for staying faithful to God, even when life has been so hard and challenging this last year. I want to thank you for showing up online and in person to learn and to grow and to serve. I want to thank you for praying for our church and for our staff and for helping us serve our community. I want to thank you for contributing and being generous even when things are so uncertain. I want to say thanks to our amazing staff across all of our locations who goes above and beyond to serve others. I want to thank all the parents for loving and serving your kids even though much of what you do is never seen. I want to thank the grandparents Thank you for investing in the lives of your grandkids and being there for your adult children. Kids, I want to thank you for honoring your parents, even when it isn't easy. 
For those with jobs, thank you for working and serving your community and your family. Uh, to those who work in retail, thank you for serving through this pandemic so that we could have what we need. For those without jobs, thank you for not losing hope and for not giving up. Thank you to the teachers who've shown commitment and flexibility as they try to do their jobs in an incredibly challenging time. Thank you to our first responders who lay down their lives on the line to protect and service. Thanks to our business owners, to government leaders who've done their best to lead through just an unprecedented time where many of those decisions, it's like impossible to win because everybody has perspectives and opinions. Thanks to the healthcare professionals who've served on the front lines to save lives and help people. To all of these people, I want, I want you to hear from me as a person I value you, and I appreciate you. And I just want to say to all of you, thank you. Thank you. Hey. Never. No. <laughs> Listen. I've taken a lot of things for granted, but church is something lately I'm not taking for granted. The fact that we get to be here together, I'm not taking that for granted. You guys, sit. Thank you. The fact that we even get to do this, I don't take that for granted. I'm thankful. I'm grateful every day. And um, I'm grateful for you. More than ever, we need to encourage each other. And we need to lift each other, each other up. Listen, the enemy... Satan, the enemy wants you to feel low. He wants you to feel low. But gratitude will lift you up. The enemy wants you to feel left out. But gratitude will make you feel cared for. The enemy wants you to feel like everything is unfair. But gratitude will put you in touch with God's incredible grace. Listen, the enemy wants you to feel like the system is rigged and that nothing will ever change. But gratitude reminds you that God is moving and working and he gives his people more than they deserve. Right? The enemy wants you focused on what you don't have and on what life has not given you. But gratitude sees all the ways that God provides. Listen, the enemy wants you feeling disconnected and neglected, but gratitude makes you realize all the ways you're cared for. The enemy wants you in the dark with the lights off, but gratitude lets the light in. And so when we give thanks in the battle, we get strength for the battle. Gratitude turns our attention to God who's done so much for us and to others, and it opens us up to joy. A friend of ours, dear friend of ours, went through a lot in her life um, a couple years ago. It was one of the worst years of her life, and. She had a 20 year marriage that dissolved. Her husband walked away from the marriage and from their little kids. She um, found out there was all kinds of unfaithfulness, affairs, all these things that she just didn't even realize for all these years in the midst of, of the marriage. And some of you have been through that kind of a breakdown in a relationship and the kind of pain that it causes. And, and she was absolutely devastated. And we were talking to her through this whole journey. She's very close to my wife. And one of the things that got her through her darkest days in the battle was gratitude. She took down an old journal and she just wrote across the top, focus on the good. And every day she would write down three or four things that she would give thanks for that day. It may have just been a phone call from a friend may have been, uh, you know, have an ice cream with her kids. Could have been simple things. But she did it every day for a year. <clears throat> and this is kind of a letter that she wrote to God at the end of that first year. She said, today I've been divorced one year. One year of incredible pain. One year of incredible growth. One year of solo parenting. 
one year of memories and getting to know my kids better, one year of surviving and thriving, one year of bottomless tears and unexplainable fullness, one year of building friendships, taking care of myself and working hard toward emotional health. And for this one year, I am grateful. Grateful, God, for your protection and your grace. Grateful for how you've shown your love to me in large and small ways. Grateful that, that there are still so many questions without answers. And my heart sometimes feels shattered. But during this year, you gave me yourself fully and completely. You allowed me to see that sometimes the most beautiful part of our lives accompanies our greatest heartaches. Somebody needs to hear that. You lifted my head. You reminded me I'm safe with you. And you've sent me into living a life that I'm proud of. In her darkest days, when she wanted to quit, when everything she had known collapsed around her, gratitude became her superpower. And it can be yours as well. Maybe this week, grab a little piece of paper Take the notes area in your phone and just write, focus on the good. And every night before you go to bed or every morning when you wake up, just write down a couple things that you can be thankful for. It could be simple things. <clears throat> it could just be things that God has done in your life. He's forgiven. He's redeemed. He's restored. Maybe for some of us, uh, you know, this is just a, a time to remember that God is good and his deeds are good in our lives and to not only look up and give thanks to him, but then to say thank you to others. Make it a point. Even maybe today before you leave service, you go, you pick your kids up from the children's area and you just, you know, say to those volunteers like, wow, you're here and you're volunteering. You don't have to do this. Nobody's paying you to do this. You're doing this out of the kindness of your heart because you love kids and you want to see them grow in their faith. Thank you. That's a beautiful thing. Maybe you see somebody out working in the lobby as a volunteer serving for a different ministry area or somebody walking out that's always waving when you come in and you just say, hey, thank you. Thanks for being there. Thanks for doing what you do. When we think others, we're the recipients of a benefit we often don't even perceive in the moment. So gratitude is your superpower. Give thanks in the battle. You'll get strength for the battle. Maybe some of you are here today and maybe you've never crossed the line of faith in your life. I want you to know that Jesus came and lived and died and rose again for you. And you can reach out to him in faith and trust him and experience his goodness in your life. I'd love to give all of you that opportunity. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes? If you'd like to become a follower of Jesus today, you can begin that journey by repeating a simple prayer after me, either in your, in your uh, heart and mind, I believe God knows, or, or out loud, whatever you're comfortable with. Just say, dear God, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus into the world. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again. Forgive me for my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Help me face the challenges that I'm up against. God, I surrender my life to you. In Christ's name. Friends, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's your prayer today, if it's your commitment, I want to ask you to just slip your hand in the air. Just make eye contact with me, just to acknowledge before God and before me, you're going to follow him and trust him in your life today. Just slip your hand in the air. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands going up around the room. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for each person reaching out to you and pray you'll fill their life with your purpose, your meaning, your joy, your goodness. We thank you so much for the opportunity to, to gather, to worship, to celebrate. We thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 
Well, let's put our hands together for those who made spiritual commitments in their life today. If you made a spiritual commitment, I just want to say congratulations to you. I want to encourage you to go to central.family and just click the link, I've decided to follow Jesus. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to know how we can pray for you or serve you. We'd also love to send you a free devotional guide called How to Follow Jesus that I think will be really helpful to you in the coming days and weeks. So thank you. Well, I'm going to ask everybody to please remain seated for just a moment. We want to exit you in a socially distant way. But uh, first, let's put our hands together for Pastor Nick, who's got a few final thoughts for us. Well, thank you, Pastor Judd, for that incredible message. And if you made that decision, make sure you head over to Central.Family, click on the I Decided to Follow Jesus button, and we will give you those resources to help you in your journey. Now, don't forget, Easter is right around the corner. So make sure you go to Easter at Central.com. You can get all the information there. Thank you for joining. And remember, Romans 8 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Keep showing up.